On the morning of August 4, 1914, the German cavalry crossed the border into Belgium. Facing them was an army of the last century. The small Belgian force was poorly equipped. Now they face the world's mightiest army, 10 times their size. The Belgians could have allowed Germany to pass through their territory. Instead, they chose to fight. Belgium's only hope rested with the forts ringing the gateway city of Liège. This complex of underground fortresses was considered one of the strongest positions in Europe. But the German army had planned for the forts and unveiled a secret weapon, Big Bertha, the world's largest cannon. Concrete forts, once thought impregnable, collapsed from Big Bertha's one-ton shells. Some Belgian soldiers went mad in anticipation of the next explosion. Others swore they would fight to the last man. The Belgian commander was knocked senseless in the final bombardment. He awoke a prisoner of the Germans. I was taken unconscious, he told his captors. Be sure to put that in your dispute. The German army began flooding across the Belgian plains. They expected no further resistance. But to their surprise, Belgian snipers, known as Franck Tireur, started shooting. Warfare in Belgium soon became a hideous experience because the population took part in the fight. Once the opinion comes up that there is systematic fracturous action, then you get the orders from above to be as harsh as possible in order to stifle this from the very first moment. And that triggers off then this wave of rather violent actions and atrocities against the civilian population. Ten civilians, the Belgians were threatened, would die for every German killed. The Germans made good on their word. Hundreds of men, women, and children lined up and shot. Word of the atrocities quickly spread. With each retelling, they became more vicious. Soon, images of a less than human German Hun began appearing. Exaggerated stories were taken as fact and found their way into newspapers. British war correspondents in Belgium have seen little murdered children with roasted feet. This was done by German troops, men with children of their own at home, or with little brothers and sisters of the same age as the innocents they torture before killing. The things done to Belgian girls and women are so unspeakably dreadful that details cannot be printed. Many of the stories that rapidly became uh, well known through the press formed the basis of a very substantial, probably the first substantial propaganda campaign in history. And it gave the Allies an extraordinary weapon. Because what it suggested was that the Germans committed atrocities not because they were soldiers, 
not because they were occupiers of Belgium, but because they were Germans. There was something genetic about their viciousness. And this was made into the imagery of the Hun. The Belgians had held up the German army only a few days. But the real cost to Germany was the image of the violation of a small nation fighting for survival. The symbol of poor little Belgium would haunt the Germans for years to come.